sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect life form. But Professor Kim Hyung Tae added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Luteus Maximus Sex. Thus, he was born. What an absolute roller coaster it has been this past month in gaming for me. After investing so much time in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I have taken a break after beating it. Man, I think I really burned myself out. I'm not gonna lie. Without going on a tangent, my everlasting thoughts of that game would have to be for another video, so I digress. I really want to talk to you guys about Stellar Blade and my thoughts and experience with this demo. Before going further, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Yes, the protagonist is extremely attractive and has an exquisite figure with lots of cake. I mean, goddammit, more like a bakery. Now at first glance, you can make some assumptions of what type of game this is going to be, but please don't. I really do suggest to give this game a shot and try it out for yourself if you can. From the demo alone, I know this is a game for me. If you can look past the obvious eye candy this game offers, it's actually a pretty solid gameplay experience. I love the ethereal sci-fi, end of the world cyborg sword wielding baddies type vibe this game gives and when i say baddies i mean seriously from what i've seen so far every female character in this game is gorgeous taken from very obvious inspiration from games that now are really praised and loved this is not going without saying the controversy this game has sparked in the gaming world look without getting too political about all the drama happening i truly do appreciate the risks being taken and the developers shift up not caving in and standing up to their vision I applaud them. Developers like these have my full support. If you haven't been aware about what's been going on, this game has been accused of the protagonist not having a realistic body and aggressively sexualizing women. Even to accuse that the creator has never even seen a real living breathing woman. Nah. And of course, it's IGN. More specifically, IGN France. IGN even came out with an apology and basically said IGN friends are on their own on this one. <laughs> now that's funny. Personally, I find all of this silly. To so consider yourself a gaming journalist and in your review, you spend 90% of it just focusing on bashing the figure and design of the character and barely even talking about the gameplay or mechanics. South Korea is the beauty capital of the world. Their skin routines are immaculate. They take a lot of pride in maintaining their beauty. It's no surprise Shift Up took the same approach with their first major AAA title. It's basic marketing 101. How can we get people to try our game? Of course, you make beautiful characters. Honestly, it's a breath of fresh air to me. It's great to see a developer not cave in to the agendas and follow their vision. Now with all that out of the way, I want to get into talking about this demo. Planet Earth has been taken over by alien invaders called Natiba. An enormous fleet of spacecrafts begin to approach Earth to try and reclaim it back. As they get closer to the atmosphere, they get showered in an array of energy blasts. Taking major damage, they quickly dispatch a squadron of pods to land on Earth. Next sequence starts with meeting Taki, our squad leader. Hola, bebe. Shit, at this point, I was hoping she was going to be our main protagonist. She helps us out of the pod and we are finally introduced to Eve. And let me say, man, the developers are quick to let you know about all the cake you'll be indulging yourself with. God damn. My goodness. From a distance, you see this giant worm looking creature that's most likely showing us what we'll be up against in the full game. Soon after, you get introduced to the combat. First impressions, you think this is just another button mashing game, but I don't believe that's the case. Thankfully, it has way more depth to it. You can do combos and chain attacks for that matter. More on that later. Movement feels refined and combat is pretty tight. Next enemies are a bit tougher since now we are being introduced to the parrying system. I actually really like this. 
learning the enemy patterns in a rock paper scissors format and doing perfect parries feels extremely satisfying. Many other games have achieved this in the past, but this also feels very refined as well. I gotta say this gives me God of War combat vibes when it comes to the third person with the light and heavy attacks and the parrying, but still distinctive enough to be its own experience. Once we reach our objective, we soon find out that our entire squad has been taken out by this huge grotesque creature that looks like it's carrying two giant testicles for weapons. The creativity of these creatures are very good, I must say. Some disgusting abominations. Taki and Eve do their awesome synchronized attack to finish off the creature. I gotta say, the presentation so far is stellar. Wow. Eve isn't in the best condition afterwards. As Taki tries to help her, we, the audience, are introduced to an alpha Natiba. Again, with the design, what are we looking at? How did they make a demon, raven, alien creature look hot? <laughs> Gotta love it. The Natiba decides to go after Eve, and Taki intervenes the attack at the cost of her arm. Then soon after, the creature thrusts its claw into Taki, killing her. I seriously doubt this is the last time we're gonna see Taki. Eve then screams, and we are shown the title of the game. What a great opening sequence. Before moving on, I want to point out that Taki seems to be a biomechanic cyborg maybe? When her arm got cut off, we see muscle, tissue, and blood very visible as well as a robotic skeleton frame. Next parts of this video, I'll focus more on the presentation and the gameplay. Without any context, we are shown arriving at a different part of Earth called 807. We meet another character named Adam. <laughs> Adam, Eve, Touche. He accompanies us with a drone. He serves as a guide and he also shows us hints. Let's take a look at Eve's design real quick. It's simple, but elegant. First thing we notice is that very long ponytail of hers and how she carries her sword as a hairpiece. That's a very nice touch. She has this very tasteful choker that fits the look. Also, these two translucent strips that almost look like fairy wings attached to her collar, accompanied by a tie with a fat knot. I will say, those gloves are so baggy, it looks very cartoony, but it works. Lastly, we have these heels that have a pretty flat surface. They look horrible to walk in, by the way. But I really like the aesthetic of Eve. And from what I've seen, there would be so many other outfits for her, and I'm pretty excited to see that. This outfit definitely gives me Sailor Moon vibes similar collars, and instead of a bow, Eve has a tie. Even when we are first introduced to her, the way she poses reminds me when Sailor Moon is transforming. I forgot to mention that if the long ponytail is too much for you, there's an option to make it shorter. There's also an option to go with a naked skin. The devs know, man. <laughs> but the price for using the skin is that you have no shield, so you will be prone to taking more damage if you decide to do that. Me, I'm a simple man and I like a challenge, so I ended up switching to it, and I also opted out to putting the shorter ponytail, so it won't interfere with my view- Research. Yeah. Research. Are you sure about that? The attention to detail in this game is pretty crazy. The rain droplets, hitting the camera, and even bouncing off of Eve is really immersive. You can really tell they put a lot of love into this game. Her walking, running, and swimming animations, and how she interacts with objects are phenomenal. There were no shortcuts taken here. I'm willing to bet they had a whole 9 to 5 team working on her hair physics alone, not to mention her actual body physics as well. Some people might feel some type of way about all the gelatin jiggling, but you can be such a prude playing this game because you probably will not like it. I'm just saying. If you hate all the physics, you probably won't like this next part. Hey, don't look at me like that. It's in the game, all right? Moving on. The demo is pretty linear, but they do a good job in adding paths to giving you that sense of exploration and also rewarding you for it by finding treasure with some needing to find a passcode to open. There's also these random bodies laying around in which it looks like Eve is taking their souls. I wonder what's all that about. I'm sure that in the full game, we will have tons of more options for exploration as some of the trailers kind of give off that impression. While exploring 807, you notice a lot of old buildings collapsing. 
As we traverse, you see huge bodies of water and giant statues everywhere you look. I mean, Adam does tell us that this was the place where the final fight for civilization took place. So this must be Ador 7. Yes, this was the final battlefield of civilization. It was also known as a truly colossal city. So we are seeing the aftermath of it. Pretty cool. As I explored these areas, I came across a legion camp in which it acts as a place where you can rest and save. There are also vending machines where you can purchase items and even unlock more skills. And you can also train. But to activate these camps, you will need a Bitcoin and have Eve inserted into the machine. I gotta point out that there's even a really cool animation for that. In this demo, we find these coins laying right in front of the middle of the camp, but maybe in the full game that won't be the case. When you rest at these camps for the first time, we get some flashbacks of Eve remembering what happened after Taki got murdered by that demon raven Natiba looking thing. Eve and us, the gamer, find out that it was indeed Adam who came and saved Eve from receiving the same fate as Taki. You know, for only having such a limited time with Taki, I really do hope we get to see her again. The supply camp acts in the same way as a legion camp, but you also have more options like having a repair console, enhancing your weapons, increasing your potion capacity, upgrading Eve's combat capabilities, upgrading your drone, crafting more of these cool nano suits, and you also have the ability to fast travel now. Damn, that's a lot of stuff you can do. It seems that every time we reach a camp and we rest for the first time, we always get some kind of story with the characters, which is a really nice touch. I did forget to mention one thing in the camp, and that is the music. The music in this demo is absolutely beautiful. My god, I caught myself various times putting the controller down and just listening. Going back to when we first landed on Earth, that melodic music playing with the beautiful combination of soft light vocals as we progress is so damn good. Now being in 807, that's when the music just begins to show its brilliance and the ethereal feelings it gives off. I really have to say that the vocals to me personally is what brings all of this together. It's absolutely beautiful. Shift up when all out with this by even making them dynamic. The smooth transition to a more intensified version of the track is incredible. There's even a vinyl record player so you can choose between three songs at the camp and each one has its own vibe to it. They all have these beautiful vocals but the two that really stand out to me is the one with the violin softly playing while the hypnotized singing plays. Other one is this bossa nova, more upbeat type of sound. I do gotta say, no soy brasileño ni hablo portugués, but my Hispanic roots in me were stimulated listening to this. I seriously can't wait to listen to the whole OST. Of course, with all this just being the demo, I don't really want to get too crazy in depth with the combat. But like I stated in the beginning of the video, the combat feels good. It's tight, it's responsive, but I really hope there's more to it than what we got to try. If you go to the skill setting machine, you will see a total of six categories of skill trees, with three only being available. As I stated earlier, you have your light attacks, heavy attacks, parrying, and your beta attacks. The beta attacks are special attacks that Eve can perform after successfully parrying, dodging, and simply just doing damage to the enemy. The beta attacks feel satisfying to execute and has some weight to them. On the bottom left, you have your beta, HP, and shield meters. I like how clean and simplistic the UI is, and you also have your item reel if you hold the corresponding directional button. Once you beat the demo, you will unlock a boss challenge that will let you try more outfits out and also more power-ups. So if you like a challenge, I recommend to try it out. The enemies in this game are ugly as fuck. 
Like seriously, gives me Parasite Eve and Silent Hill vibes with how grotesque these creatures look. I did notice that there is a lot of biblical references in the names of these bosses. I mean, since we already have Adam and Eve, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. The enemy placement in this demo is actually pretty nicely done as well, with how some enemies can catch you off guard if you aren't paying attention. First time playing though, no lie, I gotcha, got bitch. jump scared a few times. It also helps that Adam's drone can help you scan the area to show you where enemies are and other important objects. You first get introduced to the environment scanner when you are fighting this creepy ass looking starfish looking nativa. The final boss in this demo is a nice challenge. I do gotta say that it looks like a woman's reproductive system flipped upside down. Tell me I'm lying. Boy, if you don't get the fight isn't too hard, but it does test you on everything you have learned. I really did enjoy my time with this demo. I know the game might be getting hate for the design choices and whatnot, but I won't let something like that ruin this experience for me. I pre-ordered my copy, and to me that means a lot, because I normally never pre-order games. I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and if you did, please let me know by liking the video and commenting down below on what you liked or didn't like. Thank you so much again for 1500 subs. Seriously, I really mean it. I'll be working on more Final Fantasy videos in the future and more guides to Rebirth as well when I get a chance. Thank you all again and I'll see you on the next one.